Okay, so we have the first question here, which says, uh, okay, it's actually the last question of Josh number six. Okay, I just decided to pick it. And if we go to have time, we're going to look at question seven as well, which has several uh, questions as well we need to maybe can focus on. And then from there, we can just, uh, if probably tomorrow, we can just uh, proceed and also look at the uh, triple integral in spherical corner system. Okay, because we've done so much on cylindrical, and then we can just proceed to spherical as well. So those of you are like uh, been attending and all that, please watch those videos that I recorded. Though, Soon, you people are really discouraging only just taking more hour away from it. Because if I that you want to teach, just two people in class by exercise recording, recording, recording. And some of you don't even watch recording. At the end of the day, you don't perform well, okay? If I that the same question you discuss, even come in a test or exam, and then you say to perform well. And then at the end of the day, what are going to say? You are paying for this, and you don't attend classes. And you waste for you don't watch the recordings. So what's the point of paying? Like wanting it for everyone, you just don't do that. Okay, so when I say that people should attend, I know the reason why. Some of you maybe even miss the actual class, you don't even attend the actual class. Here, you have an opportunity. You can attend, you can ask questions, you can ask any question you want. You know, one is going to stick to that, no, I've asked too much questions, or maybe going to feel shy. You are just you and me, no one is seeing you, are just two of us talking. Okay. You can ask a little question that is bothering you, but you don't do that. So, how do you want to get help? You ask, I ask a question myself, no one responds. And then, how are we going to know that people are understanding or not? So, yes, I mean, it may be like a joke, I know that, but you're going to see the importance of doing that. Anyway, let's uh, move. So, we look at question number A. So question number A, uh, we are given the limits. Okay, so such questions, why are given the limits? Okay. Sometimes it may just be direct for you to do it, to try it and integrate it in that order. But sometimes it may not be easy. Okay, it may not be easy. I'm going to show you. And the same situation we had in double integral, where you're already given the limits of integration. You find that it, it, you fail to do that, okay? It doesn't work out. That causes you that, that calls for you to change what the order of integration. We need to change the order of integration at some point. So uh when it comes to one integral, the way we change the order of integration, uh we take it back to double integral. So I'll, I'll show what I mean here. So let's first start with question A. So I hope someone has somewhere to write. Okay. So we start with question A. <clears throat> So question A, we have a triple integral from zero to four, uh, zero to one, two y to two, and then we have the integral, which is four cosine x squared divided by two, uh, the square of z, dx, dy, is it okay? So now, what's the next thing? The next thing we're going to do here is try to integrate this. Remember that uh, the limits they always appear as just the order it is, right? So it means that these are limits for x, okay? These are limits for y, and then we have limits in z, okay? So the way the question appears, it's asking us to integrate first with respect to x, okay? So just focus on the fact that it contains x. If you had to integrate this guy, cos x squared, cos that's the fact that it contains x, with respect to x, are you telling me to be a, a straightforward thing? I mentioned last time that as long as what we have inside here is not uh, a linear function, okay? It's quadratic, power two, whatever, whatever you have inside the cosine or the sine function. That integration is not straightforward. It's not simple. It's not easy to do. You can spend, I don't know how many minutes and all that hours just trying to figure it out. So the way it appears, the integration will not be possible at the moment. Okay. Unless you had an X outside here, then you can say, okay, I can just use this option and then integrate this. 
But the way it appears here, no, it's not possible. So what we're going to do here is this. We are going to change the order of integration. So I'll change the order of integration of the first two guys here. Because I've noticed that the x is not possible to integrate. So I'll change the order of integration of dx and dy. So it means that I'm going to change these limits as well, the order of these guys here. OK. So this takes us back to double integral. This takes us takes us back to that double integral. So I'm going to put those guys in red, uh, in a different color, those I'm going to change. So I'll put them in red. So I'll change the, into the limits, I mean the order of these two. Okay. I'll change the order of those guys. The reason being is that I need to integrate this guy. X squared has given me a problem. Okay, x squared has given me a problem. So I'm changing the order of integration because of that. So yes, and then dx, dy, yeah. dz. Okay. So this, as you can this is just double integral problem. So I'm taking back double integral. I'll need to identify the limits of integration and change the order, right? So remember that these are limits for y. So in y, I'm moving from y is equal to x to y is equal to two. And then in x, I'm moving from x, sorry. Uh, actually, did I even write it correctly? Yeah, I think I made a mistake. This is two y, not two x, sorry. This is two y. Okay, so these are limits for x now, okay? So x are moving from this x equal to that, to x equal to that. And then limits for y are constant values, right? y equal to zero, to y equal to one. Okay, so I'll go back and uh, sketch this in Cartesian, the way we have been doing it. So this is uh, the y-axis. This is the x-axis. Okay, so y is bounded between zero and uh, one. So y is bounded between zero and one. So let's say one is somewhere here in the y-axis. And then x is bounded between what? X is equal to two y. The x equal to y, it's simply an straight right equation, right? This equation is same as what? Y is equal to uh, ah, yeah, one over two x, right? So the equation y is equal to one over two x, simply this equation, that passes through the origin here. So just dividing the value of uh, y, the value of x, for you to get the value of y, isn't it? And the slope of half, so it's closer to the, y axis, to the x axis than it is to the y axis. So this equation is y is equal to 1 over 2x, or I can say x is equal to y, it's the same thing, right? And then it's bounded above by y is equal to 1. Okay, so let's do this. And you are coming from that line to x is equal Excuse to... Excuse me, sir, it's 1 over 2 Sorry? Oh, uh, it's x here, right? Okay. okay. So now, I go back again. So y is between 0 and 1, all right. And then x is from the line to x is equal to 2. So let's say x go to somewhere here. So this line is x equal to just a straight line, right? A vertical line at two. So yes. So why? So which region is that? Let me ask you. Between region A and region B, which one do you want? Which one are we considering here? Which one is our region? I think it's region A. Are you sure region A? Depend your answer. Why is region A? Okay, please. Hmm? No, actually, it's region B. Okay, so look at the limits here. Look at the Y. Okay, so let's do this together. So Y is moving from... 0 to 1, so I'm going to shade that, 0 to 1, so I'll shade throughout that region. I'm not restricted, I can shade 0 to 1, 0 to 1, 0 to 1, I can move, right? 
Zero to one, zero to one, zero to one, zero to one. Okay, I can move, go up to infinity. That's zero to one. Now let's look at X. I'll use a different color. X, you're moving from the line to where? To another line. So X from this to that. X from this to that. You see that well, that region is traded twice. That's the region we want. Okay. The line from the line to the line, the line to the line, line to the line. So definitely this is the region we want. Okay, so this is, I'll call this region D. So that's the region we want. Now, the way it appears here, okay, the way it appears, we need to change the order of integration. The limits have to change. Yeah. Initially, what are the limits of X that are moving from a function to a line, right? Okay, now this time around, let's do the other way around. What if you say we fix X and then we vary Y? Who can tell me what the new limits? We want to fix X and then Y should be varied. What do you think should be our new, new limit in terms of x? Let's start with x. And then eh, y. Someone tell me what be the new limits now. For x, it can be 0 to 2. Okay, for x from 0 to 2, correct. And then in y? Uh, 0 to the line. 0 to the line, right? So x you can move from 0 to 2, yes. And then in the y, you can move from more. 0 to the x-axis to the line y is equal to half x. So these will be our new limits. So anyone who is not clear how about these limits? <laughs> anyone who is not clear how we got these limits? You're free to ask. OK. So now those who have changed the order of integration, so can you write our integral now? OK. So z, we haven't done anything to z. So z will still be the same. Okay, and then this means that we are going to put the limits of x here. It means the limits of x and y now have to swap after changing the order of integration, right? And then y or y will be from zero to half x. And then everything is to be the same. Four cos x squared. Uh, divided by what? Uh, 2 root z. And then now this is what? dy dx dz. Okay, instead of dx dy d, uh, z, we have now dy dx dz. Okay, because of swap, these are limits for y, and then these are limits of what? z. Okay, now it's time we can do the integration. You notice that this whole thing now is the constant. Because we're just doing it, it with respect to z, so to y first. So this whole thing, z and x are constants. So let's uh, to integrate with respect to y. Okay, so from 0 to 4. And then from 0 to 2. So the integral of this will just be uh, 4 with respect to y, right? Considering that everything now is a constant. And then times y divided by uh, 2 square root of z. And then the limits from 0 to 1 over 2x. And then this would be dx dz. OK, so let's now substitute the limits. So the upper limit is simply half x, so I'm going to put half x in place of y. So you notice that if I put half x there, I'm going to have 4 times x, and then cos x squared. This 2 from x will come down, and then you have also have another 2 here, square of z, right? So this and this will cancel out, right? So just going to mean is what? Cos x squared over the square of z. I'm sure you can check on that one. You can check on that. Okay. So this now just becomes what? Cos. So can you repeat what you just said there? I said, okay, let me, do, let me not be doing anything. Okay, let me just substitute. Okay, let me just substitute here. In place of y, I could have x. 
and then divide by two uh, root z, okay? And then the lower limit will be zero. So if I put zero here, everything here will be zero. Okay, so I can just uh, forget about that. And then I have the limits at the x, the z. Okay, so from this, you can simplify further. This two can go into four two times, and this two and this two cancel out. Okay, so we have simple, we don't have any constant there. Two into four is two times, and the two that are going to remain here cancel out this two down here. So we just have a zero to four. Zero to two. Uh, cos x squared times another x. So this x, I can bring it in front. Uh, divided by uh, the square root of z. So I'll just add z to the power half. Uh, dx, uh, dz. At this point now, it asks us, uh, we are required to integrate to with respect to x. So you notice now that it's very easy for us because I earlier said that for us to integrate cos x squared, we need to have an exercise so that we can just apply u substitution. Oh. And in this case, we have now introduced, introduced our x outside. This is what we wanted to achieve. So we can just go ahead and apply u substitution on that. Okay. So we can just do u substitution on this, integrate this respect to x. So let's say let u, so I'll use this part. So I'll say let u is equal to what? x squared, what you have inside the cos and function, right? So remember, every time you let you equal something, differentiate this guy. So du dx, this is simply equal to x. And then remember that we have to change everything from x to u, right? So it means dx also has to be substituted this du. With something is, uh, which has du, right? So how do you make that substitution? By making dx the subject of formula from this. So just doing the cross equation here and then so for dx. So our dx yeah. will be equal to uh, du over 2x. Okay, so now in place of dx, I'll put du over 2x. In place of u, uh, so in place of x squared, I'll replace it with u. Okay, so we have from zero to four, uh, zero to two, X, this becomes cosine u. Z to the power half. In place of dx, I put what? Du yes. over 2x. Oh. And then dz. Yes. Okay, now what's next? We can now cancel this x as you can see, and that x can be canceled out. And this one over two can be pushed outside the integral. So I've just one over two here. The integral from zero to four. And then from zero to cosine u. Okay, so now this is now easy for us to do the integration after doing the u substitution. One over two. This is du dz. Now this us this requires us to integrate now with respect to u, right? So just have to integrate cosine u. And we know the integral of cosine is simply sine, right? So one over two integral from zero to four. So the integral of cosine is in positive sine, okay? Positive sine u. Then it's still a constant. So don't have to worry about z right now. And then the limits from zero to two and then dz. But after doing that, don't forget to substitute back your u. Right? You borrowed this u. So let, let us substitute back our u. Our u remember is x squared. So that's uh, exactly what you're supposed to do here. So we substitute back our u from 0 to 4. This is sine x squared now. So don't make a mistake of just going back and substitute 2 here. Please don't do that. It's illegal. Okay, so z the power 1 over 2. Uh, 0 to 2 dz. Okay, now it's time we can substitute. So let's substitute 2, which is the upper limit. So I'm going to have sine 2 squared, same as sine 4. So I have from 0 uh, to 4, sine uh, 4, right? Over z to the power 1 over 4. 
And then we substitute zero here, good of minus sine zero over four. And oh, sorry, over z power one over two. And we know that sine zero is into what? Zero. So that one just goes. Sine zero is simply equal to zero. So we have, we have the integral from zero uh, to four. It's just be sine four. Z to the power one over four. Oh, sorry, one over two. Why am I getting one over four? Sorry for this. This is one over two and not one over four. One over two dz. Yeah, then we're done. We are just supposed to do now with respect to z, right? So this sign four is a constant number. If you want, you can punch it in a later, get a decimal, but this is not necessary at the moment. So let me just push sign four aside. So I have sign four. Times half or same as divided by over divided by two from zero to four. Now we have to do this respect to z, right? So for us to do it, you can take the z on top here. So this becomes z the point negative half. Uh dz. So let's uh, do it with respect to z. Okay, just adding one to that, right? Remember, this is just a uh, power of so the integral of z to the power negative half. We know that this just be. We're doing this respect to z. This just be what z to the power negative half plus one, right? Divide by the new power. What is z power negative half plus one? This is just it, half, right? So this will be z to the power half divided by half. So this two can come here, right? Half can split, so we can have a two z power half. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we have two sine uh, four over two, and then this has to be two z to the power half. The limits from zero to four. So you notice this two and this two go, so I've signed four. z power half, same as squared of z, right? Squared of z, the limits from zero to four. So we have our final answer, right? As sign for the upper limit is Four minus the roll is sine e. Four roll is simply zero. So what is cut of four? This is two, right? Okay, not plus or minus two. It's fine. Okay, plus or minus two. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, two and then sine e. Four. Okay, this is just zero. This part. So that's the answer. Anyone with a question? So sign four, if you want to get it in uh, decimals, just um, punch the value, right? You can get the value. And your calculator must be radians when it's punching that sign four. Not in degree mode, your calculator must be radian mode. Anyone with a question so far? Hello? Uh, I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, let's see if times two. The... Is it reversing the limits for integration? Sorry? Like this is since it's well, since it's been given dx to y, right? Yes. We wanted to integrate uh, y first to x. Right. So when it comes to change. Uh we have the dx dy. You wanted to integrate to the x first. <laughs> Mm -hmm. No, I wanted to integrate with respect to y first. Like I want to ask about reversing the limits. Sorry, I remember I didn't get your question first because this question is actually <coughs> asking us to integrate respect to x first and want to change it to y first. Okay. Oh, no, I, as in, I haven't asked my question. Yes, please. Yes. Yes, I understand the question. I want us to integrate with respect to x first, then to y. But we reversed it, then we started with y, then x, right? Yes. Yes, so my question is, let's say when uh, changing the limit, uh, reversing the limit, so we always have to consider the, the first one there. Right. <clears throat> Since, how can I ask it? Like both. when reversing the limits, you always have to consider the first component there since we're integrating first to with respect to x. Yeah, exactly. 
Okay, so you check that one first. You check the function inside. Am I, am, can, I, can this function be integrated? Is it possible to integrate the way it is here? With respect to the variable which is starting. Okay. And then you find that the answer is no, you can't use the NAU substitution, you can't use that, you know. Then you reverse the order for the first two that are following dx, dy. So it means you are going to scale this in xy plane. Yes, All right. and then it's ready to be constant. Well, Excuse okay. me, sir. Yes, please. Uh, can you give examples of linear functions so that we're able to distinguish them? Oh, when I said you can only do that when it's a linear function, you said? Yes. Oh, cool. So I can do that. Uh, let me give you an example. Every, every time when you have a cosine, either a sine, a cosine, that function, I'll start with a cosine. Every time, let's say, I have um, some constant inside plus x, you want to integrate this. This is linear because the power is 1. Uh, that's what I said. That's, that's what I mean. The power is simply 1 of the function inside. So this one don't have to worry. You just have to do what? Integrate. This will be sine. The same guy inside. But divide by the derivative of what you have here respect to x. Okay, so this is just what's the derivative of ax? Just be a. Okay, so let's say for instance you have cosine. Let's say of a is two. You have cosine two x. This one here is very straightforward. Don't have to start looking for answers. I mean, saying no, I need to change the order of integration. You just integrate this guy direct. So this just be sine two x, divided by the what? The derivative of the angle is just two. Sometimes we're going to have cosine of let's say four x. I can say 4x plus 2. Still, this is linear. Okay, this is still linear. Okay, so this just becomes a sine 4x plus 2 divided by the derivative of what you have, which is just 4. Okay, I uh, would give a, a number of examples. So, this also happens with a cosine. Let's have, a, uh, let's have, I mean, for a sine function, if you have a sine um, any constant, let's say ax plus some b, right? So we know that the integral of sine is simply negative cos, right? So it's just be negative cos. The same guy inside ax plus b, and then just divide by the derivative. He said, don't touch the phone. <laughs> divide by the derivative, which is a. Okay, the derivative of what you have inside, which is a c. A. Okay, so this continues, provided the power of the, the of x. This could be x, this could be y, whatever variable could be theta, as long as that power is just raised to power one linear, then you just have to do this. You don't have to do any substitution. Maybe you're changing the order. Please don't do that. Are we together? It's not that yes. always x. It can be a theta, it can be y, it can be z, whatever variable. As long as this variable is a linear variable, then don't just go straight and do the integration. This also happens if you have, let's say, a function. Um, let's say now, let's look at the cases of quadratic, right? So let's have a cosine with a constant raised to power what? Let's say two. This, you can't integrate the way it is a direct. No, you can't. Because this is not linear now. For you to integrate, you need to have a variable outside, x as well, but with a degree one. The difference with the power of what you have inside and inside outside must be one, whereby the degree of inside must be higher than the degree of outside uh, is outside the function, then u substitution is going to work. So your u will be equal to what you have inside, which is ax squared. And then you do the differentiation, you substitute. You notice this guy is going to cross out the x outside. That's what we need to achieve. OK? So every time, if you have that, please make sure that if you have a quadratic inside here, outside the function here, we must have an x or a y if this is a y or theta if this is theta squared, or whatever it is. But the variable side here must be linear, OK? And what if you have a cube, cubic? Let's say have a x to the power 3. Then what you must have inside here must be what? Quadratic. The difference must maintain must be 1. So you can use u sub. Otherwise, if you just cos x cubed alone, you can't integrate this, OK? You can't integrate that. So all the times, and this one doesn't apply to cosine and sine. It also applies to other functions. For instance, this is a function like uh, 3x squared 
plus two. And then you say this function is equal to any power, this is equal to 10, right? And then you ask to integrate this. Look at the job we're going to do, okay? You have to expand this, isn't it? But this will be very, very straightforward if you had the X aside, okay? Then this integration will still be, just be possible because I'm going to say, let you equal to what you have inside here. So you will be equal to what? Uh, 3X squared plus two. So that you know that if you differentiate this u, you're going to end up with something with x, right? So du uh, dx, this just be equal to what? 6x. So if you solve for dx here, you notice that you're going to have what? du over 6x. And if you substitute this dx on top here, this x and this x will go. That's our, our, main, uh, our main goal, to cancel that x aside. So that you're just going to have now the integral. Okay, 1 over 6, this x come outside, u to the power 10, du. Then you can integrate this guy, u to the power 10, you know how to do it. So it's just do what? u to the power 11, right? Over 11, and then times 1 over 6, of course. And then after doing this, bring back your u, which is what? 3x squared plus 2, and then you substitute the limits. Okay? So every time you have a complex function, okay? You have a complex function. Inside that complex function, you need to check. Okay, check inside that complex function, and then you check with what you have inside, outside. Can you do your substitution there? And most of our problems, they will require you substitution, okay? So there are so many cases we can do that, right? There are so many cases, maybe we have a square root inside here, you have x cubed plus say five. Make sure that for this to work, you must have x squared outside here, so that if you do your substitution here on this, this will buy you. Of course, your u is always what you have inside. And then you do, do you do and then this x squared will cancel as a point because you know that the derivative of x cubed will just be three x squared. And you're going to have this x squared that will cancel this what x squared outside here. So that's how you substitute x. Okay, so otherwise the way it is alone, like x cubed plus one, and then you want to degrade this. It's not possible. You can sweat, okay? You can sweat doing this. I don't know how many hours they're going to spend just trying to figure out what the answer is. Okay, can sweat. Same applies when you have a quotient function. Let's have a function on top here and a function down here. You want to integrate these guys straight to x. So make sure that let's have a case like x up, up. then down you must take x squared plus one. Then you can integrate this because now your denominator becomes your u. Your denominator now becomes your u. Okay, same applies to quotient function. So let's say we have x power half outside on top here or square root, then this must what what you should be supposed to have with three over two, right? Plus one. Because you know the difference is still one. This will be a u. If you this guy going to end up with x per half, that will cancel this x per half on top there. So just trying to uh, brief you how you can uh, do your substitution here. And now you can figure out which uh, should I change the order of integration or not. Otherwise, most of these cases they say of one over x to the power half or x power three over two. This you can't do it, you can't. You can't do it unless you have x power half on top there. Then it's possible. Is it clear, guys? Sorry? It's clear. Okay, so please, make every time we want to integrate, check. Is that possible? And what else did I forget? I forgot an exponential function. Even this guy is so weird at some point. So an exponential function, if you have a linear power, within mean the power is that raised to a function, a linear function, this integration is very much possible because know that this one just going to be e, the power x, the same of guy, right? Divided by the derivative of the power, which is just two. This one also works like a cosine and sine. They will handle them. The same function, Divide by the drift of the power that you have. Okay? But in the case whereby you have e to the power x squared, this and then just dx alone. This is not possible. Okay? You can sort it also here. e to the power x squared, just integrating this. You can't. So here you must have x for you to do that. Okay? You must have x down here. Then you can just use your use of shown. This will be your u. And then do the derivatives and all that. You end up canceling this x down here. Otherwise, the way it is just e to the power x squared is not possible. So in simpler terms, I'll just give you a conclusion. If you want to integrate, um, 
What can I say? Okay. For cosine function. So make sure that if you have a cosine function or sine function, what you have here is a side. If it's x power n, then what you must have inside here must x power n plus one. Or maybe multiply by any constant here. Then this integration is possible. Similarly for sine, you have x power n sine. Here, let's say we have one a. This must be x power n plus one as well for you to do the integration. Okay. Also, if you have a function as up on top, let's say x power n. Here down, you must have x power n plus one. Plus see, whatever constant you have here. Then the integration will be possible. Similarly, if you see for, for, for exponential function, if you have x power n down here, then you must have e to the power, some constant, x power n plus one. Then you have shown possible that. That's the summary I can give you. Okay. Otherwise, just like that, without uh, giving the other one, then you can't. That cause for changing the order of integration. Okay, shall we go to the next question? Are we all clear? Or there's someone with still who still has some doubts or something? Okay, so let's go to question B. Question B, can someone copy for me? Because uh, I want to be going back and forth. I can just uh, write the limits. So question B. So I'll be solving this. I'll be dividing it. Eh? I'm tired of just doing two papers. So question B, we have 0 to 1. Uh, 0 to 1. X squared to 1. Give me the integral. Did someone write down somewhere? The integral is what? 12xz is y squared. So 12xz e to the power zy squared. This is z, uh, dy dx dz. Is it like that? Let me check. The order is the order correct? Okay, dy dx dz. All right. So yeah, here again you have the something special, right? So we are told that we have to integrate this guess with y. Now let's identify the function that contains y alone. That's the first step. Because we have to integrate this with y first. So let's identify the function of y. So now this is just e raised to the power y squared. In fact, if you want, you can even forget about this z. So just focus on e to the power y squared. Guys, is this possible to integrate this with y? Is this possible? Because x and z will be constant, so don't have to even worry about that, those guys. Is that possible to integrate? No. Oh, so you can't integrate this because I'm just from explaining. If you have y squared there, you must have a y down here. So this, we can't do it, right? So what are we supposed to do? We have to change the order of integration of the first two. Okay, so we have to change the order of integration of these guys, right? Okay, x and dx and y should swap. So for us to, don't just swap like that, swapping them, no. We have to know the region first of integration. So what would be our region of integration? So we sketch this. In the, this is the xy plane, right? Remember the limits are x and dy, right? dx, dy, so that's an xy plane. Okay, so this is the x axis, this is the y axis. So for the first one, we have y is equal to x squared. Okay, so these are limits for y. Remember, these are limits for y, right? Y is equal to x squared. No, how to do this is just a parabola. Okay, so let me start with the constant values first. X is from 0 to 1. So 0 to 1, say my 1 is somewhere here. Okay, and then we have x go to y squared. x go to y squared is actually a parabola that looks like this. Okay. Forgive me, I may not draw a, a nice parabola for you, but anyway, something like that. That's x, y is equal to x squared, isn't it? Okay, so now, we are told that this guy, um, 
in the y direction, in the uh, y axis, you are coming from the parabola to the line y is equal to one. So y is equal to one, or in the x is from zero to one. I should have written this one somewhere here, no, it's fine. Okay, so let's locate which one is the region A or B? A. A, right? Yes. Okay, A. Because if you do that, you can uh, check. X is from where zero to one. So move zero is the y axis, zero to one, zero to one, just move zero to one, zero to one, up to zero, uh, up to one, right? That's X. Now let's look at Y. Okay, so I'm going to switch it. Uh, color, I'll use, uh, let me use green. So why you from the cave, right? To one, so from the cave to one, cave to one, cave to one, cave to one, cave. To one. So now that's the region we are shading, okay? It's been shaded twice, right? It's intersection, intersection sets or some, or linear programming, okay? So that's the region we want, isn't it? So our region is A. So I will get rid of everything first, so I can just draw it properly. Okay, so we have this here. So it's the x-axis, it's the y-axis. So just have this here. Okay, so that's the only region you want. Okay, up to one here. In the y, and then in the x is bringing down up to one. This equation is y is equal to x squared. Now, the way it appears here, from y equal to x squared to one, it's not working, right? So I have to change the order of regression. So y here I've got at some variable limits, okay? The limit that depending on the variable, x at constant limits. So I have to do the other way around now, okay? We have to do the other way around. We need to have limits for y now be constant values of y. So the constant values of y, I want someone to give me the limits for y as well as give me the limits for x. So now we're changing now. Y should have constant limits, or X should have variable limits. What should be our new limits of integration? For Y, let's start with Y. Hello? Let's start with Y. What should be our new limits? Y is between zero and one. Sorry? Y is between zero and one. Zero and one, right? Because this is our original interested in. Remember that? So y is between zero and one. Correct. Okay. What about x? It's between zero and the square root of y. Okay, so from this x is coming from the y axis, x is equal to zero to the cave, right? So the cave, so for x from the cave way. So just going to take a square root of y. So uh from zero to square root of y. Okay. So those will be our new limits of integration. Okay, so now from this, what do we do next? We set up our integral. Okay, so we're going to set up our integral. Z, we haven't done anything to Z, so Z is to maintain zero to one. Y is zero to one. And then we're going to put the innermost X. Remember these guys have, have switched, right? So the limits of Y now, the second most, I will second from this, uh, from outside here. And then x from zero to square of y. And then we put our integrand. And our integrand is pop xz e to the power uh, z y squared. Now this will be dx, okay? dy dz. Okay, this will be our new order. Now instead of y dx dz, we have dx dy dz. <clears throat> So now this is now very straightforward because we are just integrating respect to x and you're just going to integrate from x. Or you should simply you're just integrating x there. And this is very straightforward integrating that guy because everything now is a constant. Okay, everything else comes a constant. So zero to one, uh, zero to one. The integral of this for x squared, you know that this has be x squared over two or six x squared. And then everything else is still a constant. 
and then the limits from zero to square root of y, and then dy, dz. Okay, next, we substitute the limits. So zero to one, uh, zero to one, this is six, okay? In place of x squared, put the square root of y, so we're squaring this, and the square the, and the square root and that will cancel. Just can just write y here, right? So have six y there. Z e to the power uh, z y squared. If you substitute the lower limit to zero in place of x, everything just be zero. So I'll say minus zero, right? Uh, dy uh, dz. Okay, next we have. Now, let me just write, put this six outside here. So I have yz e to the power z y squared dy dz. Okay, so now you notice that now when did, we have achieved what we wanted. For us to integrate e to the power y squared, we say that we need to have a y down. And we have achieved that, isn't it? Because now, integrating this guy's way to y, we're just focusing on y, right? So have this y down there, and you have e to the power uh, z y squared, right? That's where our interest is. So you notice know, the integral that just be possible now, be very much possible, can just apply u substitution, okay? So I'm going to say let u, okay, so let me just do this. Um, I'll say let u, equal to the power of e, which is z y squared. That is our u, the whole of this power here, it's our u. Okay, so our u equal to z y squared. And then du dz, remember z is simply, uh, du dy, so z is just a constant, right? We're interested in y, y is a variable in this case, z is a constant. So du dy is simply what? Two uh, z dy, right? Okay. And then let's solve for dy. We have, we have to get rid of dy. So our dy will be equal to uh, du over uh, 2z dy. Okay. So now get this information and substitute it in the uh, in our uh, question there. So 6, 0 to uh, 1. Okay, 0 to 1. This is y. z e to the power, remember z dy squared is simply u, and then dy, our dy is now, okay, so this is u, our dy is simply uh, du over 2 z dy, right? And then uh, dz. Okay, so you see that it, this y and this y will go, and also z, okay, so well, a lot of things will go there. So there's z and z will go, uh, y and y will go, and this two here can go into six, so count of three. Okay, so that would be now uh, something simple to look at, because y and z do quite a of it. So we're just going to have, let me use this side. We have six aside there, the integral from zero to one. Okay, zero to one. Oh, what else now? So we just mean with e to the power u, right? And then we have over two here, two at still remain. And this will be du, uh, d, z. Okay, something like this, right? Yes, du, dz. So z, is, we still have to do it with z. So this two here and that three outside can just have a three. Uh, that two and six outside can just have a three, right? So zero to one. Uh, 0 to 1, integrating e to the power u, du dz. Let's bring back our u. We still need our u. 0 to 1. Oh, we need integrate first. So what's the integral of e to the power u? 
Remember the integral of e to the power x shall just be the same thing e to the power u. And then the limits from zero to one is eight. So at this point now, it's the point where I can bring back our u. So zero to uh, one. So this will be e to the power u or z y squared Okay, so this is a uh, three. We substitute the limit from zero to one. If you put the parameters, that's one. So this has to be e to the power z, right? because one squared is simply one. Minus, we substitute uh, zero, this will be e to the power zero, just be one. So write this e to the power zero. And then z. Okay, so at this point, you're almost done. Zero to one, e to the power z minus one dz. Okay, so now let's integrate this way to z. So the integral of e to the power z just be e to the power z, okay? Minus the integral of one with respect to z, it just be z. And then the limits from zero to one. So let's substitute the upper limit is e to the power one minus one, that's the upper limit, minus the lower limit, which is zero, right? This is e to the power zero, minus zero, where the z is simply zero, right? So this is e to the power one, minus one, and then you substitute here, e to the power is simply one, so we have minus one as well, okay? So we have three, E minus two. Okay, so this is our final answer. Anyone with a question? Okay, it's not a long question, on that I was just trying to go state by state. So I was just writing an essay things. Otherwise, you can just come direct from here all the way up to here. It's very much possible. Do not write all those things. Anyone with a question? Ladies and gentlemen, question? Are you all clear? Hello? Oh, excuse me. Are you clear? Uh, I'm kind of sorry. If you can... The network lost me, so I'm a little bit behind. Where are you? Where did I leave you? On the e to the u integral, where you mentioned about it being the same thing after you integrate it, and then going downwards, I didn't get the thing because the network is quieted. Okay, so I think it's um somewhere here, right? Is it? Uh, no, no, no. This other side uh, here. Is it somewhere here, yes, right? The other side. Yes. Okay, so here, remember that we have now changed from uh, y from the integral of, sorry, uh, x to the integral of u. Okay, so let me just uh, do this here. Yes, from actually the integral of y to the integral of u. So um, I was, now the next thing was for us to integrate u, uh, e to the power u, right? Because I've converted that. So I was supposed to integrate e to the power u. So the integral, you know, the integral of e to the power x it just be e to the power x. This guy is a very stubborn guy, right? Something has e to the power u. So you in this case is representing x in this case, right? More like x. So e to the power u is to be e to the power u because know that e to the power function to be, if you have an exponential function, right? e to the power function, say f of x or f of whatever, to just be the same thing e to the power f of x divided by the derivative of that f prime of x, okay? That's how the exponential function behaves. So, what's the derivative of u? Just be one, isn't it? Okay, the derivative of u is simply one. So, if you divide by one, just be the same thing e to the power u. Okay, and then from there, I did the integration. I uh, find that it's still e to the power u with this way to u, of course. So, this is what we got e to the power u, and then the limits are from zero to one. What went down is to z, so this is dz. Okay, next thing. 
It's to bring back you. Don't forget to bring it back. Please don't forget to bring it back you. Don't just substitute him and say that uh, bringing back you. And then our you was ZY squared, right? So I brought back my ZY squared here. And then substituting the upper limit just one. So one square is simply one, one times Z, you have e to the power Z. And then uh, lower limit is simply zero. So this will be e to the power zero. So e to the power zero there is it. And then next, what do you do? The next thing is just simply to simplify, right? So e to the power zero is simply one. So e to the power zero is one. So, and then now integrating this guy with square to Z. Okay, so e to the power Z, the integral of this square to Z just be e to the power Z as well. Okay, and then the integral of one with respect to z, this just be z. So now I have a z here. Okay, and then substituting the limits from zero to one is what I've done, putting one here and also putting one on z. That's for the upper limit minus the lower limit, putting zero here on z, and then putting zero on z here. You have that. So e to the power zero there. So e to the power zero gives us one. And then this one here, that's another one minus one. One, okay, have negative one here. And even this will also be negative one. So total will be negative two, and then I have three outside here. So this is my final answer. Is that clear? Or is it means we asked the question? Yes, it was right. So are you at the same page? Oh, yes. Okay, so now uh, let's go to question number C. So I've never mentioned about changing the order of integration to point integral. So no wonder I thought of bringing these questions because you may find that maybe the question just comes and is asking you to change the order of integration. So you guys copy that question. I want it so that maybe I can, because I've now gone down there, I need to be copying and coming down. Someone to copy that question quickly. Someone to quickly copy that question. Yeah. Tell me when you are done. Who is copying? There's no one copying, guys. Hurry up, time is moving. I'm copying the question, Stephen. Okay. So tell me when you are done because I want to move down there. In fact, you can go both, even you can go between question D. Yeah. Yes, I'm done. Okay. Let me just divide this page as well. Hey. Under ninety degrees. Yeah. All right. Okay, so just trying to divide the paper. All right, so give me the question you see. Uh -huh. The integral from zero to one. Uh -huh. Integral from the cubic root of z to one. Uh -huh. The integral of zero to lin three. 
Do what? Lean three, natural log three. Okay. Yes, and it's pi e to the power two x sine open bracket pi y squared close bracket over y squared mm -hmm. dx by dz. Okay. All right. So this is uh, question number C here. So look at the order we are given. We are told to start with respect to x. So let's uh, isolate this. Let's let's uh, identify the function of x here. There are so many functions. Right? It's, yeah, it's a single function, but I'm just calling them like one function. So you notice that the function that has go, uh, we need to do respect to x, just this e the power x. I think me this one again fail to do it. I will integrate e to the power x alone. Are we? Yes. Yes. So we don't have to change the order for this this first integral, right? With this way to x, we can just maintain it the way it is. We don't have to do anything, right? So let's do, go ahead and do that. Because in the integral of e to the power x, you know that this is very straightforward. Okay, just be e to the power two x over the derivative, which is just two. Okay. So yeah, we can do that. Let's go ahead and uh, integrate that. So we have uh, from zero. To one. This cube to the right is z power three, right? That. Okay, cube is same as well z power three. Now the integral of e to the power two x. This is just be pi. E to the power two x over two. So I'll write two in the denominator here. Okay, and then sign pi uh, y squared. So I'll write two. This two comes as out of by integrating that sub two y squared here. And then the limits of integration from zero to natural log of three dy dx. Okay, let's move. We substitute the upper limit. So the upper limit is a uh, natural log of three. So from zero to one, this already is at power It's dy dz. Oh, thank you. Do I do z? Yes. Okay, z to the power one over three to one by e to the power in place of x. I'll put natural log of three. So this is two natural log of three. Okay, that's in place of x. And then sign by uh, y uh, squared over. Uh, two y squared. So for for today, I'll send what we have solved so far into going to go. Yeah, but I'll still keep on adding more. Eh? Okay, are they minus? For the upper limit, it is zero, right? So I'll put a zero here. So this will be e to the power zero. So, so, so by e to the power two times zero has to be zero. Sign by y squared. D. Huh, why did I even do that? Okay. Why did I divide this? I know it's okay. Pi. I'll squeeze it to power zero. Sine pi y squared, right? Okay. Over again. Remember this also is over two y squared, right? This is dy dz. So e the positive that's zero. Uh, that's one solve. What do we get now? So zero to one. Z to the power one over three. To one. Okay. Now here we can simplify this. E natural go uh, two natural go three. How can I write this guy here? Anyone who knows how to write this? You can write this, eh? Huh? As it? Natural log of what? Three to the power two, isn't it? Remember the property is natural log? Have you forgotten?
Is it my network or your network? I can't get to you properly. I'm saying we recall or I recall rather. Yes, so so every time I have natural go a to the power n, this can be written as what can drop the powers n natural go a. So here I'm just moving in inverse. Okay. So this same as what? Natural go nine. Okay. So two natural go three same as natural go nine. Now, guys, every time we have e raised to power, natural go a. <laughs> Can you get your gate and confirm this? E raised for natural of A, the answer just A. Because natural of natural of is simple as a base of E. Okay? Natural of is a base of E. So this these guys end up cancelling at some point. So natural E the point natural of something is simply that something. So what I'm going to have is what I'm trying to say is this. Okay. But it doesn't matter, you guys can even get a grade and punch. It's still going to give you the same values. So you're going to end up with e to the power natural of 9. And this is just simplified to 9. Okay? So I'm just trying to explain what, how, what we're going to get from there. <coughs> so pi, so this has to be e to the power natural of 9. Okay? Sine pi y squared over 2y squared, this has to be minus pi, because e the power is simply 1. Pi sine pi y squared over again 2y squared. Eh? And then dy dz. So again, factorize what is common there. What is common is pi sine y squared over 2y squared, eh? Okay, to reduce that mess there. Let's factorize what is common there, which is pi sine, this should be brackets, right? Sine pi y squared. Eh? Uh, what else is common? Okay, that's it. I'm then down we have two y squared is common. So I just have e to the power natural of nine. Here we just minus the one. Because I've removed everything. And then dy is it. So I said e to the power natural of nine is simply nine. Okay, let me just write for the sake of you guys remembering as you're going through. Okay, z to the power one over three. One, this is pi. Sine pi y squared over two y squared. This has be nine minus one. Dy dz. And nine minus one simply eight. And then eighty, these two can divide into eight, we're going to have a four. So that four and the pi, actually I'm going to get four, I'm going to get here. After dividing two and that pi, those are constant numbers. I can just push them outside as four pi. Okay. Those are just constants, so I can just push them outside. This is over two here. Oh, over y squared, sorry. Okay, now we are here. Let's check again. Is integration possible there? With respect to y now, eh? We're trying to integrate sine in that guy. Okay, let's forget about pi. Yes, let's just focus on sine y squared over y squared. Is that integration possible, guys? Huh? Is that integration? No. It's not, eh? Because even if we are doing substitution, sub sub you can say let you go what we have inside here. You're going to get with two, get two y. Two y cancel this y. We cancel out with two uh, y squared. Not possible. So this cause for what? What does it also do? 
What are we supposed to do? Change the order of integration. Aye. And in which plane? YZ. YZ plane. So I have to draw YZ plane. Okay. And identify that region. So you can say this is the y axis. This will be the z axis, the vertical one. Right? Okay, because of following the convention. Remember the vertical axis, z axis, the dimension. It's the vertical one. And then the horizontal is y axis. Y and x are horizontal axis in the y and y z plane, right? I mean, in three dimensions. Okay, so now let's start. Uh, we have z, z from zero to one. So z is from zero to one. Okay. And then y, y is from z is equal to uh, one over three. We have y from z to one over three, to y equal to one. So y, maximum value of y is simply one. One over three is same as what? Can I write this as what? Power three both sides, power three both sides, same as what z is equal to what? Y to the power three, right? Okay, you guys, you're familiar with the y is equal to x power three. We know this, right? Y is equal to x power three. We are familiar with this. And I explained that this, this guy, this is an equation that looks like this. Remember? Okay, this is y is equal to x power three. Remember the vertical axis is y, the horizontal axis is x, right? Why can you do the same thing even here? Okay, just because of z. So something same as what? Y, this z has taken the place of y. Or y as taking the place of x. So this is the same as what z is equal to y power three, which also be the same case. <laughs> okay. That's an equation, cubic function, eh? Hello. Are people around or I'm left alone talking? <laughs> so uh, I was saying this. Cable z is equal to y to the power three. It does that cable. It is a bit okay. I mean, I'll draw the accurate one, so don't be necessary. And then decide to look like this. Now, don't need this side. We're not interested in this side. Eh? We're not interested in this side because everything is in the positive direction, because positive side. We see that x, sorry, what, z is starting from zero to one. So, don't need this. Uh, negative side here. So I can just uh, get rid of that side here. So I'm mean, interested in the positive side, positive part of it. So this equation is z is equal to what? y to the power 3. Or y is equal to the cubic of z. And then, okay, this is 1 here. And then this is 1 here in the y-axis. So again, I'll, choose, I'll ask which one is the region, A or B? Which one is region? Region A. Are you sure region A? <laughs> Why is it region A? You people don't you don't just guess. <laughs> huh? It's region B. So I, I have given you a trick. Oh, you do it. Where they you share it, right? And then they just going to give it to like intersection of those lines you're shading. That's the region you want, right? So if you notice know region, uh, if you look at the first limits, the limits for Z is said from zero uh, from zero to one, right? Zero to one, those limits for Z. So I'll start moving in Z from zero to one, zero to one, zero to one. That's in Z, right? Zero to one, zero to one. Okay, that's in Z. I can go up to infinite, right? And then in Y, Y moving from the cave to one. So from the cave to one, from the cave to one, from the cave to one. You know, this is the region you want. Should be. Okay. This will always work if you try to shed it, start to know the region. That's the easiest way in turn in fight. So yeah, we have region B now. Now, remember, initially the values of Z, Y were actually varying values, right? We had the variable Z from the cave to the line. 
Now I have to fix the values of y and the value, value of values of z. So let's do that. So initially the y between what? So y, oh sorry. Y will be between what and what? We'll see. Or z between what and what? Let's see. So remember that initially the values of z were constant values, right? While the values of y were variable uh, constants, but this time around, I have to swap. Let's find the constant values of y. So, what would be the values of y, guys? Between what and what? What be the values of y? Zero to one. Zero to one. Okay. And then z. Ready? Zero to root. Zero uh, to y to the power three. Okay, so it's from zero to k, right? This is y to the power three. Okay. So now these are our, our new limits of integration. So can go here now. Anyone who's not clear on this before I move? Anyone who is not clear before I move? Okay, people are quiet. So again, everything is okay. Let's go now. So it means that our new integral will be y values will be outside, or the z values will be the innermost from zero to y cubed. Okay, we have four pi outside, of course. Don't forgetting four pi outside. This is a sign. Pi y squared divided by y squared. This is the uh, dz dy. Okay, now this becomes dz dy. So you notice that now this is the, the whole this guy is a constant now. Okay, it has become a constant. We have frozen it, it's freezing. Eh? So let's uh, do it this way to z now. So the whole that is a constant. So four pi zero to one. We just going to have sine pi uh, y squared divided by y squared, and then when they get this way to z, so this time to z, right? Remember, we're doing it square to z, and then the limits from zero to y cubed. And then dy. Okay. Let's substitute the limits of four pi. Sine pi y squared over y squared. In place of z, put y cubed, right? So I'll put y cubed in place of z. That's the upper limit. The real limit is simply zero. So everything will just be zero there. Eh? So you notice that here have y squared in the remainder, here have just have y, or y cubed, right? So y squared and y cubed, you're just going to remain with a y, okay? Or remain with a y. So just have y sine pi, y squared dy. Okay, so this is now very, very uh, straightforward to do. So what integration technique are going to use now? Hmm? Use substitution. Okay, use substitution, right? So let's uh, apply use substitution here. So I'm going to say let u equal to what you have inside there. So pi uh, y squared, right? So you get everything inside there. So du, uh, dy, this just be two pi y. So let's solve for dy, of course. Du over two pi y. And then we go back and substitute there. So four pi, zero to one. We have y here, this now becomes sine u. 
In place of dy, we put what? Uh, du over 2 pi y. Okay, so y and y will go. Oh, and you have 2 pi here, and also we have 4 pi. Okay, so we have this, right? We can say we have 4 pi over 2 pi, isn't it? Because we can put that 2 pi aside. So pi and pi will go 2 into 4, that's 2 times. So 0 to 1 sign u, du. Now we can just, we just have two outside there. We integrate sin u, what's the integral of sin u? It's negative cos, so this will be negative cos. I can put negative there, cos u. The integral from zero to one. Yes, please. Hello? Yes, yes. Can you scroll up a bit? Here. Yeah. Ah. Uh, uh, all right, thanks. Okay, you are done? Mm, yes. Okay, don't worry in case you missed anything, you didn't write anything. I'm going to send this file, the whole of this file today. Things I've solved so far, I'm going to go. So, yeah, but I'll keep on adding more. But for today, I'll send in case people want to go through something. Okay. So let's substitute back our u. What was our u? Our u was pi y squared, okay? So negative two, cos. I have a question. Yes, please ask. Our, aren't we supposed to have like a two pi outside the, after you divide the two pi into the four pi? Mm -hmm. Now what's your question? <laughs> the pi is not there. <laughs> The pi is cancelling out, can't you see? <laughs> the pi is gone, right? Oh, okay. I thought it was the basic <laughs> no, division. No, it was too much, the problem. <laughs> okay. All right, right. Okay, so our u was uh, pi y squared. So bring back our u. Pi y squared. That's our u. Now, after bringing back our u, you can do the substitution. Negative two cos, okay. So negative two, just put it outside. The upper limit is one, so this will be one square times pi. That's that just because what cosine of pi. Minus the only is into zero or zero square times pi, just because zero. Okay. So cosine pi that's negative one. Cos zero is simply one. So I'm negative two. Negative two, the final answer just before. Okay. Any queries? So let's look at the last question and then we can call it a day. Eh? At least I'll be okay after we solve this. I know, okay, at least this is more challenging. But again, this question seven, I still want to touch on question seven. I still wanted to touch question seven. But we'll see after we finish our triple integral is critical. We can go back to that one as well. Because I feel question seven also has got some brainstorming questions. Brainstorming questions too much there. So we'll see, but we just divide this. Uh, So, KP, you are the one who was copying a question. What was question D? The integral. Okay, just, um, a minute, just a minute, just a minute. Okay, is that? The integral from zero to two. Okay from zero to four minus x squared. Uh -huh. From zero to x. Okay. For two sine. Two? 
two sign. Okay. Open bracket two Z. Two Z. Yes. Close bracket over four minus Z. Dy dz dx. Okay. So this is our last problem. So, uh, so first of all, let's identify. We're asked to integrate with y. Can you do that? Can we? Yes, we can. Hi, guys. Because look, put yourself. Constant. So constant. Yes, we can. We can do, isn't it? Yes. Yes, we have a constant. There's no I here. So the integrating a constant is the simplest thing you can do. Okay. So um we do the integration of that. So uh, y. Okay. So we have uh, two sine, uh, two z over four minus z from zero to x. Oh, sorry, you can't remember it again to y, so y. From zero to x is z dx. Okay, so we substitute the upper limit. So the upper limit is simply y, right? Oh, so it's x. So in place of y, put x, or going to just x there. So I can bring x in front, so it has to be 2x sine 2z. Okay, over. 4 minus z. If I plug in the lower value, which is 0, everything just be 0. So I can just uh, forget about that, right? dz dx. Now the next thing is for us to integrate to z. Okay. So focus on this sign something over 4 minus z. Guys, are we able to do this? No. Can we do that? <laughs> no. Because there's no many use of you cannot work at the moment. Okay, so let's see what we're going to get when you change the order of integration. Okay. Let's see what we're going to get after changing the order of integration. So I need to know that. I need to sketch that. In in which plane? The XZ plane. XZ plane, right? Okay. So I'll draw my x z plane. And the good thing is that all of them are starting, both of them are starting from zero. So I just need the positive part of it. From zero to one, zero to something, right? So this will be x-axis, this will be z-axis. Okay. Now x from zero to one. Okay, so I'll draw zero to one. I don't know, somewhere there, whatever. Okay. Well z. Z is the parabola, right? We have Z equal to four minus X squared. Same as you can look at it like Y is equal to four minus X squared. Right? It's the same thing, don't forget, don't confuse. Now there's Z, how do I treat it? No, it's the same concept. Okay, now the next thing is for me to know something, right? You have negative X squared, you know that this guy must be turning down, right? Okay, it must be facing down, isn't it? When the coefficient of x squared is negative, so I have a parabola that faces down. Okay, let me just uh, first. I'll get it. I'll draw it later. I'll draw it later. So I need to scale that parabola here. So this four is actually where the parabola is starting on the uh, y-axis. On this case, it'll be on the z-axis, because that happens when x go to zero. If you plug in x go to zero, go to z is equal to four. So this guy is starting at four, right? And it's facing down. 
Okay, it's facing down. So it's going to cross the x axis at some point. X axis at some point. But we don't need this side here because all the limits are starting from zero going somewhere. The negative with the positive side. So that side is not necessary though. But anyway, I'll just show you. I'll put it there. And it must be the same both sides on the my drawing, is that okay? So now the next thing, well, it may not be necessary or necessary, but you have to know where it's crossing the x-axis as well. And then when it's crossing the x-axis, this happens when z is equal to zero, right? Okay, so four minus x squared is equal to zero, that's on the x-axis. So you can just do what? You can or what can you do? You can just see, use different two squares, right? X minus two, two, oh, two minus x and two plus x. You can factorize that, right? isn't it? That's just different two squares. So we're going to have x is equal to two and x is going to have two. So it's crossing at x axis and negative two and positive two somewhere here. Okay, so this was not that necessary, but anyway, it's okay, let's try it. So that is our sketch. And remember that x was from 0 to 1. So say 1 is somewhere here. So x from 0 to 1, while z is from 0 to the curve. So it's more like this uh, region here. I think everyone can see it, right? X was just coming from 0 to 1, while z is from 0 to the curve. So it's actually this region. Do you all agree? Do we all agree that's the region we want? Yes. We don't need the whole lot of this. It's an inside. So that's the region we want, region D. So X from 0 to 1 or Y from that to that. Now, what if you do the other way around? Let's try to do the, do the other way around. Right? So this time around, what should be the limits of Z? Okay, so let's see. So Z, remember that Z had variable limits. Okay, so we so have to find the limits of X this time around. So tell me the limits of Z now as constant limits. Zero to four. Zero to four, exactly, right? From here to the maximum value of x in this region, which is four. What of z? Oh, sorry, what of... Wait, Excuse this, me. For, this I mean is for x, right? Excuse no, no, no. me. Yes. I have a question. Yes, please. I would like to see the question. Are the limits from zero to one those of x or from zero to two? I just want clarity on that. Uh, limits for x are from zero to oh is it two wait no no i think i've made a mistake did i it's one nine yes yes it's zero to two where did i get these two from by the way <laughs> is it here yeah, no that's the question those are the limits from no that those are the limits of x yes not the one no it's zero to two Oh, then it's me who changed something, eh? Okay, thank you so much for that. So it means that the original need is this one now, eh? It has changed. Me who changed, sir. I, I don't know where I got it from. You mean the region now is this one, eh? Isn't it? Yes. Okay, that's our region now. Okay, so still, still maintains, right? So it says Z from zero to four, what of X? X from where? So Z is from zero to four, from the Y axis, X axis here, to the maximum value of Z, which is four. Now what of X? You notice that X will come from, the minimum value of X is zero to the cave. Okay, so x from zero to what value x on the curve? 
So remember that k was given by z is equal to x minus, oh, 4 minus x squared. So let's solve for z, I'm sorry, for, uh, for x. So I'll take x squared this side, I'm going to have positive x squared, and then I'll take uh, z aside, 4 minus z, right? So taking the square root of both sides of x is equal to the square root of what? 4 minus z. So this will be square root of uh, 4 minus z. Is that correct? Hello? Yes. 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 OK, so what's the next thing? The next thing now to set up our integration, right? OK, so the limit for z from 0 to 4, all means for x now be inside from zero to the square root of uh, four minus z. Okay, and then here we have two x sine two z over uh, four minus z. This is dx dz now. Okay, so dz dx now dx dz. Okay, now let's integrate straight to x. So uh, from zero to four. So this will be the two x squared over two, right? We're integrating that. This this guy will be x squared over two. So two and two cancel out. I think you can see that, right? So just going to be the x squared sine two z over four minus z, the limits from zero to square root of what? Four minus z dz. Okay. We finish this, we finish it, we finish it. So the upper limit is a uh, root four minus z. So we substitute. But don't forget we are squaring this guy. Okay. And then sign 2z over 4 minus z. Uh, low limit is 0, so I can put 0 here, just be 0. So you wonder if we ignored it. So you see, guess what? What has happened? Okay. 0 to 4. This square root and square will go. Will go. You're just going to have 4 minus z. And then sign 2z. Down here again, you have 4 minus z. dz. OK. So you can see that that 4 minus z and 4 minus z cancel out. So we only remain with uh, the integral from zero to four. Uh, sign two z dz. Okay, now this is very, very straightforward, right? So that's the integral of sign two z. Hmm? Cos two z over two. Sorry. Negative, is it negative negative cos two z over two? Yes. Now you didn't even give it a surname on face. <laughs> you didn't give it a surname which is two z, which is negative. So that is that was very big a right. Over to it. The integral of sine is always negative cos. The integral of cosine is always positive uh, sine. But the derivative is the opposite. Okay, zero to four. So now we okay, can substitute. So this is same as negative half four sine. Okay, the lower limit. So the upper limit is cos e, two times four, right? So it's cos eight. Because the going of two times four cosine eight minus lower limit is simply zero cos zero, right? 
sub negative half cos eight minus one. Okay, so that's the answer you have there. Any questions? Any questions, guys? No. So which one did you solve in class? Someone said no, you solved something in class. Which one did you solve? By the way, guys, did you all understand what we have done today? Uh, we managed to follow what you are teaching. Sorry? But we managed to follow what you are teaching. Okay, so uh, we end here today. And then let me just send this file. Some people, people can start going through something. That's about, I don't know how many pages are there. It has um, 28 pages. Okay, so I'll send it. Otherwise, good day, guys. Thank you, good day too.